The coil yarns in large hanks are then transported to the factory where the loaded truck itself is weighed on the weigh bridge. These hanks are then unloaded, sorted, weighed and fed on the semi-automatic spooling machines. The spools, weighing 10 kilograms each, are then loaded onto the wooden pallets, roughly according to their visible differences in shades. These spools are further closely sorted according to their shades by the Mupins, who are traditional color experts with years of experience behind them. The genuinity of the coir yarn is checked thus. Since the shade of the coir is a direct indicator of the evenness of the coir, Similar batches are sent to the respective tufting mechanism to make a perfectly even colored row. Tufting machines are custom built at the R&D department by the principals of the company in Italy. The factory holds five machines and is expecting four more by the middle of 2006. Before the yarn is fed onto the tufting machine, it is checked or passed for the faults in the coir yarn. The highly skilled workers here make sure the fed amount of coir are even and of the same shade. The yarn is cut into tufts of various thicknesses and are forcibly stuck onto the PVC layer. The mattress is then passed onto the refrigerator for cooling. After the freezing, of the mattress is vacuum sucked to remove the dust and other particle impurities from the mattress. Again here, the tuft mattress is closely scrutinized or passed for deformities in the coir yarn stuck onto the PVC base. The PVC base is detached from the Teflon sheet marking the last stage in this machine.
The finished roll is cut in accordance with the pre-planned patterns using the custom designed blades on computerized cutting machines. The machine cuts the mattresses to pieces of varying sizes. These pieces are either sent to the flocking department for machine printing or the manual printing and coloring department. The mechanized printing or flocking is done in the flocking room with the help of Herbecker machine, which has provision to print up to six colors. These machines, each of them has six pallets or blades on which the mats are arranged. Onto these mats, in accordance with the preset design, the glue is applied. This stage is followed by the spraying of polypropylene powder, a custom developed by the R&D wing in Italy. Onto the glued area along the design set by the specially developed screen. The magnets arranged over the pallets prevent the powder from slipping off. The finished mats are then arranged onto the netted trolley which are driven into the curing machine where the optimum temperature of 140 degrees Celsius and pressure helps the fiber to settle down and remain permanently fixed. The buffing machine in which each mat is manually fed to the machine to be thrashed in order to get rid of all dust and other particle impurities follows curing of the mats. Every single worker here is a talented artist with a great color sense and an eye for detail. For the manual stencil printing of the mat, a different mold is used for each color. These molds are placed over the mats and created using fast color dyes. The colors used for the screen printing are acrylic paints. The color expert or the color man is yet another artist with a penchant to identify the right shade of color required mixes these colors. His vast knowledge and experience in the field enables him to mix the color samples and finalize on the right shade required. The colors in RGB mode are sprayed onto the mat with help of custom built molds based on the designs by the design expert. The design expert initially sits with the client and develops the design draft based on their brief. The finalized design is then sent to the in-house mold or die maker in order to get the required printing shape. These mats are also bleached in select cases in order to provide them a brighter appearance unlike natural fiber. Bleaching can be done either on a single piece or the whole roll directly after tufting as per the requirement. The waste bits are the pieces which are obtained after shapes of the mats are cut. These are then fed to the recycling plant in order to separate PVC from natural fiber. The fiber is powdered and exported for mushroom farming and other agricultural purposes to European countries. Very soon, the PVC is to be replaced by rubber by the parent company in its efforts to produce 100% eco-friendly products from Kera Fibertex. It is here, the defects, if at all any, are checked and the pieces rejected to be either repaired and brought back or passed off as factory seconds. The final product, after the printing and drying, is transported to the final passing unit where each product undergoes quality control check.
packing, labeling and stacking onto the wooden pallets follow this. After which they are forklifted to the giant containers. The well-equipped factory premises, combined with innovative marketing techniques employed by the efficient marketing team, are what makes Kera Fibertex different and the leader in the field.